anybody for a non-candidate. O'Malley, no one knows who he is. Bernie Sanders, of course, is worth watching. I'm going to tune in because I know this guy is going to be hilarious. This guy's a stand-up comedian. He's pretending not to be a loser from uh, the New York's Lower East Side of the 1930s in a soapbox in Union Square, speaking for the ILGWU about the Triangle Shirtwaist fire. When I take over in this country, the rich are going to pay their fair share. And not only will they pay their fair share, but I am certain that others will pay their fair share as well, especially those who have any money and anything they've achieved. They must pay their fair share because nobody has earned anything in this country not on, except it was on the back of others. And so I think a minimum tax rate for those making more than $10,000 a year should be at least 98%, and I would make it graduated so people should not say that I'm unfair. Anybody making more than 20000 a year should pay 99%. Any, anybody making 50000 and up must pay 100% of their, of their income as taxes. So you say, how are they going to live if they pay 100% in taxes? My answer is simple. Let them live like the others have lived with nothing. Let them go on welfare, food stamps. Let them see what it's like. I want fairness. I want equality in this society. And therefore, I think that fair, fair taxes are the fairest way to go. And 100% is fair enough for anyone making over 50000 a year. And as far as the millionaires and the billionaires... I tax them at 150 percent. So how are they going to live? Because they got plenty put away. They could sell their houses, they could sell the yachts, they could sell the cars, and uh, they could empty the bank account. So 150 percent up to 10 million, 300 percent if you make more than 20 million dollars, and then we'll have fairness in America. I would also take all of the street people from uh, Black Lives Matter, and I make them all of my cabinet because they know how to make things run. They know how to deal drugs. They know how to sell. They know how to make a profit. They know how to buy. Know how to sell. I'm going to put them into the Department of Human Affairs. I'm going to put them into the Education Department because they speak such fine English. I'm going to take someone from Black Lives Matter to run the uh, Health and Human Services Department as they know all about welfare. Believe me, we're going to have people on the ground who know just how to make this country work. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I'm running as a communist. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So I think at a time when we're living in a society where the people on top have almost all the income and wealth that is being generated, yes, I heard I that you stupid pots with people who may disagree with us on women's rights and on gay rights and say, let us at least come together on these other issues. You, you low life so demagogue, you can retire you, with dignity. And you're the kind of you, you're you're the kind of uncle they the threw table. out of a house during Pesach. You're the kind of uncle that got thrown out of satyrs. Bernie Sanders is the kind of Jew that came to a satyr and the people in his own family couldn't stand him. They threw him out. They asked him to leave before the fourth question. This guy is such a pain in the neck. The only reason he's gotten this far is because there's nobody to compete with him. You know he's a Trojan horse for Hillary Clinton. I told you that. I've told you that over and over again. She's been selected. She's been picked. No one knows who O'Malley is. He's a stooge. He's in a debate. They could, may as well pick someone off the street, O'Malley. No one knows who he is. That's number two. Bernie Sanders, he wouldn't have lasted one day if the Hillary Clinton campaign didn't create him. I told you, by sounding like what he is, a left-wing maniac, it makes her sound centrist, even though she's also a left-wing fanatic. And a grifter on top of it all, in my opinion. How does he get this far? He wouldn't last a second. He'd take a joy. It, it would be a polonium uh, knish, I guarantee you. The day they don't want, if he actually surges too far, he better get a food taster. That's all I can say to you. He better watch out for a Polonian knish. Now, I have a soundbite I got to play right now in the Savage Nation. God, that Chinese food was so good last night. No, I did. I got a lot of hope from it. I swear to God. Shredded pork, harvest pork, bean kirk and pork, bean kirk and pork, Hunan spare ribs, Henry's pork, Kung Pao pork, Polish sausage. When I see, when I go out in San Francisco at night and walk around, I see the young Chinese people. It's a largely Asian city. And I see young Chinese eating uh, and drinking. I said, they're the only hope we have, the last bulwark against radical Islam. They're not going to accept Sharia law. Yeah, go ahead. Try to convert mainland China. Make my, go make my day. That's why the Chinese joined the Russians, by the way, in attacking ISIS. Because they uh, want to kill all the Uyghurs who came from Uyghur. It's like, that's not wheat, wheatgrass juice, Uyghur. Different than wheatgrass juice. The Uyghurs are Chinese Muslims from a previous invasion going back centuries when the, the Arabs invaded the belly of China and converted millions of people to Islam 
through the sword, through the flame, through rapes. This is uh, the history of Islam. It's always been through violence. It's not the religion of peace. Christianity, by the way, had a, had a long period of conquest and conversion. You know that. But right now, it's uh, Islam doing what they've been doing for a thousand years or more, which is uh, trying to drag everyone back to the seventh century. Anyway, the Chinese have sent their own special forces to fight alongside the Russians and to hunt down and find the Uyghurs, the Chinese Muslims, and kill them in Syria because they don't want them coming back to cause trouble in China. Wouldn't it be nice if Barry from Honolulu said, any American who joins ISIS or Al-Qaeda, you're losing your American passport, you're not coming back here. Why is, he, why is he not doing that? Answer, I don't know. Now, the more I listen to Trump, who I'm 100% for, I've told you, I, mean, I don't mince words, I'm not like hedging my bet, I love Donald Trump, I think he could save America, he's truly a nationalist. In my opinion, he's as close as we're going to get to a real nationalist in this day and age. When I listen to his speeches, sometimes I think I'm listening to my own words. So I'm think, and this has been going a long time because it started with one of my previous books, my 17 point plan for saving America. A lot of those points wound up in his. It's not like because I'm so smart, it's either his staffers are listening to me and writing it up as though it's their own, or he likes me so much he's listening in his limos and then channeling me because he knows that I really have a stethoscope to the heartbeat of America. 21 years, believe me, you learn some things about America. I want you to listen to him talking about the Syrian refugees and tell me if it doesn't sound familiar in clip four. I love a safe zone for people. I do not like the migration. I do not like the people coming. Frankly, this could be the greatest Trojan horse. This could make the Trojan horse look like peanuts if these people turned out to be a lot of ISIS. He's right. He's right. But I, I don't think he's the only one who said it. I know I've said it for quite a while right now and others have said it as well. But he's willing to say what everyone knows to be true. And yes, I'm going to tell you something. In my great new book, Government Zero, which will be out in two weeks, you can buy it on Amazon, I have a chapter entitled Zero Strategy Against ISIS. And one of the subheads is the enemies within. Where is the media? We are the new good Germans. Islam's thousand-year war in the West. Direct action for nuclear Iran. Denying the global threat. But then we zip up to chapter 7. And I write these subheads. Tell me if you agree or disagree. What country is this? Sleeper cells among us, amongst us, among us, among us. Leaving Christians to the wolves. The sleepers awaken. Importing crime. Importing disease. Importing socialism. Illegal immigration for profit. Can we get America back? And that segues nicely into zero religion, Lenin's Pope. And I talk about politicizing the papacy, channeling Lenin, the power of religious authority, the Pope attacks free speech, the Pope promotes junk science, the real agenda behind the climate change scam, the Marxist encyclical on, uh, on care for our communist home. And I know just where the Pope is coming from because I've researched him for six months now. If you care to comment on any of the topics I've raised thus far, then you're a very troubled person. Uh, but we have a line open to you at 855-407-282. And uh, I invite the calls. We don't know what we're waiting for us tonight. And we have a little montage of Hillary as you're dialing 855-407-282. There's one open line to michaelsavage.com. And uh, let's play the Hillary montage so people know what we're talking about. We came. We saw. He died. <laughs> I am sick and tired of people who say that if you debate and you disagree with this administration, somehow you're not patriotic. And we should stand up and say we are Americans and we have a right to debate and disagree with any administration. <laughs> I don't feel no ways tired. Oh, no. I've come too far. Psychosis. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Putin basically said in a long press conference that, oh, you know, I, all I want to do is protect the rights of the minorities, namely Russian speakers, and he's 
been on a campaign to give everybody who has any Russian connection, there are a lot of retired Russian military in uh, Crimea, he's given them all Russian passports. Now, if this sounds familiar, it's what Hitler did back in the 30s. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> <laughs> just what we need we have a sorority right now that's vicious we need an even more vicious sorority running the country that would even be better here's a little uh, story for you top of michaelsavage.com denmark 77 percent of muslims think quran's instructions must be applied fully they're importing 7th and 8th century throwbacks who believe that the Quran must be f factually followed to the letter of the law. 77% of Muslims think a Quran's instructions must be applied fully. Why would you bring any of them to a Western nation unless you're a suicidal liberal? Why? Can anyone answer that question? Research show that Islam is the only religion where people become more violent the more they practice their faith. Did you know that? A poll among Muslims in Denmark shows this. Well, I can go on and on, but you don't want to know that. You don't want to know it. You have your heads in the sand. Many of you are liberals. You're good people. And you want to believe everything will work out. You want to believe that eventually that Muslims will stop being fanatical. When they get here, they're going to change and become good liberals. Is that true? Is that what you really believe? Or do you just want to make believe this problem will go away? How could you not see what's going on? In New York... Two days ago, a, uh, a Muslim, an Arab, threw a Molotov cocktail at two Jewish boys in religious garb, just walking the streets one in the afternoon. Bottle caps thrown at Jewish mom from mosque, NYPD says, no hate crime. It wasn't a hate crime. Arabs can't commit a hate crime. Only white males with blonde uh, hair and blue eyes can commit hate crimes to the psychopathic world that we're living in. So look, we have a problem on our hands. Let's take some of your calls, because you know and I know this is the last election we're going to have in this country where anything matters. Either Trump wins or I would say any conservative light wins. The only one who I would not vote for, I'm going to sit out the election. If Rubio is the choice, I don't vote. He is no different than Hillary Clinton. Rubio is a, is a creation. Rubio is a, Rubio is a fiction. Rubio is an ice cream bar created by Sheldon Adelson and uh, the guy who owns uh, uh, Larry Ellison. Adelson and Ellison, that's, that's not bad. Adelson and Ellison were friends. Adelson and Ellison found Rubio. I could do a song on it. They found this guy, young, allegedly good-looking, if that's your type, with an O at the end of his name, Hispanic. Uh, that was it. And they created him. He's a creation. He's a total open borders guy. I don't know anything about him that is uh, at all appealing. He's too lightweight to be a president. But then after Obama, anybody would do. But if Rubio's the choice, I personally am not voting. I'm not voting at all. I'm sitting the election out. I'm not voting for open borders. Wouldn't live with myself. It's that simple. N'importe où Deus de monde. And I don't know where that is, for those of you who speak, speak the, Frank, the French lingo. N'importe où. I love that statement. N'importe où Deus de monde. I used to love French poetry, French literature. Not trying to be high, bro. I just loved it. I couldn't relate to Spanish literature. I had to drop out of Spanish. You know, did you know that little secret, a little side note? Can I tell you that in 30 seconds or less? It'll take me 30 seconds. Could have done it already. I was in either, I don't know, it was, it was college, and I had to study a language. And I always struggle with Spanish. I like Spanish because I love the music, the Cuban music and all of that. But I couldn't relate to it. There was something about the tilde that got to me. The pronunciation, the tilde, just got, I couldn't handle it. And so I went to college. I studied Spanish for a year, and I was really struggling with it. I didn't like the literature. I got, how many times can I read Don Quixote in Spanish with a windmill? I wasn't that interested in it. And so I was, went to a park on a cold autumn day, and I sat in the park alone. I didn't know it was called meditation. I just sat in the park, and I was worried about Spanish. I didn't like it. Couldn't, I couldn't handle it. And all of a sudden, the thought occurred to me, why don't you switch to French? So I went back, I dropped out of this, I switched to French. I took French for five years. I don't know how long, four or five years. I don't remember how long. And although I was never really great at French, I loved the French literature. And I just thought about what I would like to do. So I just always went with what felt better for me in school, and it always worked out. 
that's not always you know easy to do. Like it's really hard to switch from organic chemistry 